you don't fit in Look who's in the reject bin It's the raggy dolls Raggy dolls Dolls like you and me Raggy dolls Raggy dolls Made him perfectly So if you got a bump on your nose Or lumps on your toes Do not despair Be like the raggy dolls And say I just don't care Mr. Grimes, proud owner of Grimes Soft Toys Factory, was feeling very pleased. He'd just had a telephone conversation with a businessman in Scotland. Oh, hey, we get thousands of visitors a year, all hoping to see the Loch Ness Monster, of course. <laughs> None of them ever do. And they get a wee bit disappointed, especially the bairns. I see. So you want me to make up some sample Nessie dolls and send them up to you? Aye. Why not bring them yourself? I prefer to do business face to face, you can. So do I, Mr. McGregor. Tell you what I'll do. The factory goes on holiday in a week's time. I could come up then. Can you recommend a reasonable hotel? Och, didn't waste your money on hotels, man. Come and stay with me. And so it was decided. Mr. Grimes would visit Scotland and combine business with pleasure. When the Raggy Dolls got to hear of the trip, they decided they would go along too. They sat in the treehouse, making plans. They had to think of a way of getting there without Mr Grimes knowing. No problem, said Back to Front. All we've got to do is hide in one of the sample boxes. And hey presto, Bonnie Scotland, here we come. It was as simple as that. After a long drive, the Raggy Dolls felt themselves being carried into the back room of Mr McGregor's shop. The two men went upstairs to Mr McGregor's flat above the shop much to the relief of the very cramped Raggy Dolls. In no time at all, they pushed open the top of the box and climbed out. Phew, said Sad Sack. Thank goodness for that. The back room of the shop was full of knick-knacks and souvenirs, tartan hats and scarves and toy bagpipes. I w w wonder if they w w w work, said Hi-Fi, picking up the set. He blew into the mouthpiece. Luckily, the pipes made no sound. But someone was watching the Raggy Dolls. Hey, what the devil do you think you're doing? Said a fierce-looking Highland doll, complete with sword and shield. The Raggy Dolls jumped. Oh, gosh, we're only visiting, said Dotty. We don't mean any harm. Sassanax, said the Highland doll. I might have known. What did he call us? Whispered Sad Sack. I think it's a Scottish word for the English, hissed Princess. When Dotty explained why they were there, the Highland Doll became more friendly. He introduced himself as Robbie. Aye, well, you have to admit, it did seem a mite suspicious. You could have been burglars. All we want to do is see some of the sights, said Lucy. Yeah, said Back to Front, like the Loch Ness Monster. And the Highland Games, said Dotty. Hmm, said Robbie. I have an idea, and it's pretty good. Though I see so myself. Do you see those tartan scarves? The following day, the Raggy Dolls found themselves at the Highland Games. They sat alongside Robbie on the back shelf of a souvenir stall, disguised as Highland Dolls. Mr McGregor was explaining to Mr Grimes that he not only had the shop, but also several souvenir stands located at all the main tourist attractions. As soon as the coast is clear, we'll have some fun of our own whispered Robbie. And sure enough, when Mr. McGregor took Mr. Grimes to look at the hammer throwing, Robbie led the Raggy Dolls to a quiet spot behind one of the big tents. I thought we could have some Highland games of our own, he explained. Brilliant, said Dotty. What do we have to do? Well, I thought the laddies could try the hand at tossing the caber, and the lassies could try some Scottish dancing. Oh, yes, said Princess. Will you teach us? Aye, but first we'll have to find a keeper. What's a keeper? asked Sadsack. It's a awful heavy, big piece of wood, explained Robbie. They looked around and soon found a spare tent peg from one of the big tents. It was big and round and twice as tall as Sadsack. 
What do we do with it? He demanded. Robbie demonstrated. Y you hold it like this, and then you heave! The cable was tossed forward in an arc, and it landed on its end and toppled over. What's the point of doing that? thought Sadsack, dreading his turn. Let's have a go, said Back to Front. But Back to Front couldn't see where he was going. He staggered about a lot, but at last managed to throw it a little way. The lassies clapped. Well done, said Dotty. Claude and Hi-Fi managed even better. Then it was Sadsack's turn. He managed to lift it, but fell over backwards. No throw at all. Hi-Fi is the winner, declared Robbie. Next, he showed the Raggy Dolls the steps to a Highland Fling. They could hear the music coming from the real games. Right now, one and two and away we go. Robbie called out the changes, while the Raggy Dolls whooped and twirled in their tartan costumes. Turn your partner to and fro. Sadsack began to get dizzy. He decided that Highland games were more like torture. Just then, he trod on his trailing tartan and tripped over. I'm no good at this, he moaned. He looked up, and to his horror, saw a large metal ball on a chain, whizzing through the air straight towards the others. Look out! he yelled. The raggy dolls scattered, just as the deadly object thudded into the ground. What was that? said Dotty, visibly shocked. Oh, just one of the hammer throwers, explained Robbie. Sometimes they get a wee bit carried away. L -l -l let's g -g -g get out of here, stammered Hi-Fi. That was just a bit too close for comfort, said Back to Front. Aye, well, maybe we should be making our way back the new, agreed Robbie. The following day, the Raggy Dolls put on their tartan disguises once more and found themselves on a souvenir stand by the shore of Loch Ness. Once again, Robbie was their guide. As soon as they could slip away, he led them up to a high rock with a magnificent view of the loch and the surrounding mountains. Gosh, said Dotty, no wonder they call it Bonnie Scotland. Over there, you can just see Ben Nevis, said Robbie. Who's he? asked Sadsack. Robbie laughed. Ha! <laughs> He's no a person, it's a mountain, the highest in the British Isles, and it's all Scottish. Uh, what about the loch? said Back to Front. Is there really a monster? Robbie looked at each of the raggy dolls in turn. Can you keep a secret? He said at last. The raggy dolls nodded. Then come with me, he said mysteriously. He led them all down a path through the heather until he signalled to stop and to be very quiet. Lucy began to get concerned. You're not there. I mean, is that? I mean, I'll be going to see a monster, she whispered. Aye, whispered Robbie. A whole family of them. He beckoned. With their hearts in their mouths, the raggy dolls peered over a rock, only to see a family of picnicking tourists. The raggy dolls saw the joke and giggled, all except Sadsack. They're not monsters he protested. Oh, yes, they are, insisted Robbie. But, just like Nessie, they're good for business. And so were Mr. Grimes's Loch Ness monster toys. Every one of the samples was sold within ten minutes. Mr. McGregor was delighted. The two businessmen agreed terms and shook hands. And for the rest of the holiday, everyone had a marvellous time. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, made imperfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet and join our raggy doll chums. Cause raggy dolls, raggy dolls, are happy just to be. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me.